Britain is becoming a nation of much older parents. When people think my dad is my granddad, it doesn't bother me. The number of British women giving birth in their 40s and 50s has more than doubled in the last 10 years. One minute I was told I was on the menopause and the next minute I found I was pregnant. I'd have another one next week. Yeah, you know, just the way it is. I can't help my idea. The number of children born to fathers in their 50s and 60s has also doubled in the last decade. My dad looks like a granddad. He isn't. He's my dad. I have to be independent because um, just in case my mum and dad die. It's my life and I can give my children a good life at the moment, hopefully for a long time to come. Darren Minns is 46 today. Happy birthday to you, Mommy. And she'll soon be celebrating the birth of her third child. Oh, my goodness, only three to 50. Oh, Mum, four. It will be her partner Dave's first baby. He's 48. I hate to tell you, Dave, but the 49's creeping up fast. <clears throat> Lord. I think it's obscene. You people have got age on the mind, <laughs> age on the brain. Darren and Dave met nearly four years ago. Hello. You're right. That's fine. I live in quite a country area, and you don't tend to meet a lot of females, really. At my age, at 48, I should be 49 when the baby's born, and you tend to think you're past it. I didn't ever think I'd... I actually didn't think I'd have another relationship, to be honest, but Darren saw to that, didn't you, my love? Darren is now seven and a half months pregnant. I need to know if you want to know um, the sex of your baby before we start. I already know, you know because okay. I've had an amnosynthesis, oh, okay. So, okay. so I know it's a boy. Right. And he's Harry. <laughs> <laughs> but the pregnancy wasn't planned. I went to the doctor and asked for some contraceptive pills. And he said, no, you're not having any, you're over 45. And he did these blood tests, phoned me at home and said, no, you're menopausal. Very, very unlikely you'll fall pregnant. So he says, and because of your age and everything else, I'm not giving you anything. So he said, you'll be fine. And of course, it was about eight months later and I did a pregnancy test and it was positive. Are you comfortable there? Yeah. Yeah, look at the size of this now. I took five tests and I just thought, no, it's hormonal, there'll be something, it's not right. Even when I went for the 10 week scan, I thought, no, it, it'll be a cyst or something. It won't really be a baby in there. It's been difficult to come to terms with, I have to say. How old are you, other children? Uh, 17, no, nearly 17 and 15 and a half. Are they excited <laughs> that you're pregnant? Um, the older ones are uh, really struggling to come to terms with it, to be honest. It is difficult for them. Um, but the younger one, she's just absolutely ecstatic. I was really chuffed. Um, I've always wanted a little brother, so I was I was really happy about it, and I was just like, oh, OK. I was absolutely devastated. I didn't speak to her for two and a half weeks, and it's taken me ages to come to terms with having a little brother. So I've got baby looking out there. Oh, look at that. Okay. You can see there, perfectly. Yeah, you can, can't you? He looks like Winston Churchill, doesn't he? <laughs> But being pregnant at the age of 46 has proved more difficult for Darren. I don't remember feeling this tired with the others and I don't remember feeling as exhausted at 30-odd weeks as I do now. I mean, even just walking up the street seems an effort at the minute. I still feel young, but my body's telling me different and I, I actually, I've suffered quite a bit this pregnancy. Oh, yeah. It's been a bit of a shock, really. And I've... I have been worried about how my feelings were going to be towards it, really. At least he hasn't got my big nose. He's got a nice little dinky <laughs> nose. But this scan today, I've, I've had feelings that I didn't think I'd have, and the motherly instincts are coming through. And Which I think one? at your age, you are slightly going against nature, really. At, at, you know, when nature they say tell, mid, no, but, no, mid but nature 40s. tells you when you're not 
when you're not, when you're past it. I mean, if you were past it, as you were told, you would be pregnant. Nature's told me, because you're pregnant, and why would you not know? Nature told me, because you're pregnant, it's fine. But what if nature tells you you are too old to get pregnant? I lied to be a mum at 51. A woman of 51, pregnant with test tube baby, told yesterday how she lied about her age to receive fertility treatment. Pauline Lyon became Britain's oldest mother when she gave birth to her daughter Lauren 11 years ago. There we are on the front, front of the page. paper. I couldn't believe she it. I shouted to her and I said, here, yeah, God on my I said, we're on the bloody front page of the mirror today. I felt so embarrassed because I didn't think it was going to come out like that. All the hell that loose, didn't it? And four years later, at nearly 56, Pauline got more headlines when their second child, Brody, was born. I kept the scrapbooks and that, so when they get older, you know, they can look back and know all what happened to them. They've both in the, been in the same position. Pauline is now 62. Come on, Laura, it's your turn to get washed. And her husband, David, is 61. While most people their age are looking forward to retirement, they're getting ready for the school run. Hi. Me and David are the oldest parents down the school. People know where their mums and dads, so some of the children, you know, might say, Lana, is that your granny and granddad, you know, and she just tell them, say, no, that's my mum and dad, and, you know, they just seem to accept it. Both Pauline and David have grown up children from their first marriages. Well, my first marriage broke up when my daughter was six, so, you know, if we'd have been together, obviously we'd have gone on and had more children, but that weren't to be. Um, and I'd always wanted more children anyhow. And when <clears throat> we first met, we talked about having a baby fine. between us right from the beginning, didn't we? And now we got grown-up children, it didn't mean we loved them any less. We just wanted one between us to seal a marriage kind of thing. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't have set, thought myself at that stage of my life having any more children. But once I met Pauline, it just felt right. By that time, Pauline was 47. We tried to have natural conception, but it never worked. So, you know, it was just one of those things. And nobody knew why. We didn't know why. Mm. They'd done tests on me and David. David's sperm was all right, but they found out that I'd used up all my eggs. So... Consultant said the only thing was egg donation, IVF treatment. The hospital had an upper age limit of 50 and, crucially, a three-year waiting list. At 47, Pauline would have run out of time, so she lied, changing her date of birth so that she appeared to be 45. Well, I'm not the type of person to lie any rate, so we didn't lie doing it. But we had to, you know, if not, we wouldn't even have got one attempt to have a baby. You know, when you're really desperate, you just do anything, you know. They were offered treatment, and on the third attempt, when Pauline was nearly 52, Lauren was born by caesarean section. When I was born, you just, you know, look at it in the caught in that in the hospital and just can't believe that that's come out of your tummy kind of thing. Marvellous, really, with everything, you know, in the right place and that. It's amazing, you can't, you know, you don't take your eyes off on the first few days, do you? Mm. Listen to them breathing and that and, you know, little noises they make. Brilliant. <laughs> Fertility treatment had so far cost them £7,500, but Pauline and David soon decided to begin a second course of IVF. I was just desperate for another baby. And they feared he'd do anything, you know, at the time to get one. Money was running out, so they remortgaged their house and approached another clinic willing to treat Pauline at the age of 55. We decided we'd only go to the three treatments, mm, didn't we? Yeah. And we knew it was going to cost us £11,500 for the three treatments. Mm, lucky. So we borrowed the money. <laughs> third time lucky again. And it was third time lucky, wasn't it? It was on the last... We were mm. virtually broke, you know, we were virtually broke, weren't we? Mm. And, uh, and it happened. 
Brody was born in March 1999, one month short of Pauline's 56th birthday. To get one of each, uh, mm. yeah. it's now unbelievable, wasn't it, really? Brody's now six, Lauren is 11. All my friends understand that they don't like, make any jokes about it, that my parents are older, but sometimes I don't really like it because they call them nanny. Some people call them nanny and granddad, but they're not. So sometimes it gets a bit annoying, but sometimes it's all right. My dad looks like a granddad. He isn't. He's my dad. And my mum looks like a granny, but he does. She isn't. There's quite a vast age difference. When Brody's 20, I should be 75, and probably be 76. <laughs> we might only live till they're in their early 20s. But who's to say that a younger couple can't go outside and get knocked down? <laughs> My ambition in this life is to make sure that both of them are hopefully happily married and settle down before I pop my clocks. Um, whether that will be, who knows? I have to be independent because um, just in case my mum and dad die, um, and then me and Brady don't have nobody to look after us, so we have to sort of be independent and take care of ourselves. But for Pauline, even at the age of 62, you're never too old for more children. That be honest, still there. I'd have another one next week. You can't... That's just something you can't explain. You know, just that long and as there every day, even now. And if I talk about it, I'm going to get emotional. But, you know, just the way it is, I can't help how I feel. So... Come on, Bob, get all you're not too old yet. Bob Salisbury became one of Britain's oldest dads when his son Robert was born 12 years ago. Bob is 84. The age gap doesn't matter. We love Robert and we love each other. And I think that's all that counts. Bob's wife Shirley has been caring for him since he had a stroke early in their relationship. They met when Bob was 71 and Shirley was nearly 40. They'd only been together for a few months when Shirley found she was pregnant with her first child. He was worried about me because I was drinking an awful lot of lemon pop uh. at the time, mainly lemonade. And he said, go and find out what's wrong. <coughs> so to please him, I went to find out and they turned around and said I was pregnant. That was in an April, and Robert was born in a May. Yeah. It was a shock and a, a surprise, really, to find out that I was pregnant. It just changed the whole yeah. thing, being a, a set of parents. Yeah. We weren't expecting it, and it was a lovely surprise in the end. At the age of 71, Bob was a first-time father. He still is a marvellous dad. He was then when the baby was born. I see, and he still uh, is. It's true that true from the notion of plan, you know. He was so proud of him when he was a baby. Bob helped uh, with the feeding and the changing of the nappy, uh, taking him out for walks. Is he on flesh and blood? What he's trying to say is that uh, he was happy. He wasn't expecting to become a dad. And it's, as he said, it's his own flesh and blood. Three years later, Bob and Shirley got married. Little Robert was their page boy. I think he always wanted a child. If we were both a bit younger, we would have, and we met when we were younger, we would have liked to have <coughs> more children, but this, what has made us happy and changed our lives completely. Yes. 
is mm. aware that his dad's older. Uh. But I don't think that makes any difference mm. to him. When people think my dad is my granddad, uh, it doesn't bother me. I think it's important that my parents love me, even though we're older. And, you know, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter how old they are, they still love me. You know that. I think my parents are different now, as in they're not as strict. And I can get away with murder. Shall I leave you here for a minute while I just pop to Danny's over the road? Sure, whatever, go. Can <coughs> 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 you just look after these for a sec? I'm just going across the road. How long does it take to buy a chicken? Not that long. Finished. OK, thanks, Dan. I'll see you, Tra. See you later. How long does it take you buying? Oh, that's Gary bonus balls. Oh, I said, I don't know. You're going to need to what money out, Mum. Oh, why? What do you want again? Well, if you want to spend so much time in the butchers, I want to have time to pick some again. Oh, all right. What's he want now? Around £31 worth of games. Oh, you do, do you? Yes, and if you would uh, hurry up, I wouldn't have time to choose them out. Right, what games do you want? Kelly out now as an early Christmas present. Yeah. He's been a good boy. Still doesn't mean you're not getting me the MP3 player. I do spoil him. I think if you saw my daughter worth spoiling, Oh, and they see right. something they want, I think they oh, should have it. Maybe younger parents don't, but as an older parent, I think they should have what they want. I mean, I spoil them sometimes on a Friday night or a weekend, they'll have a pizza. You say, Mum, can I have a pizza? And I'll say, yes, yeah, phone up. You haven't done that for years, so you can shut up. <laughs> yes. Special boy, and we think a lot of him, so I think he deserves the best that anyone can give him. Darren Minns is now 32 weeks pregnant, and it's her last day at work as a nursing assistant. Pam, I'll start teas. I'm very sad to be leaving. They've been absolutely wonderful here, so supportive. And uh, it is going to be quite hard, really, but I will keep coming back in and popping in to see them. I am on my feet all day, and it is quite hectic at times, and you, you don't get to sit down much. Do you want a hot drink, Mark? Hot chocolate? Oh, you want one sugar in yours, don't you? Darren's partner, Dave, is a farmer. Come on, lad. At the moment, they live apart. She lives in Welshpool, um, a flat above a local shop. I live here. Obviously, the ideal situation would be for us to be together. Uh, we'd like to build a house, but with farming and incomes as they are at the moment, it's going to be very difficult. It'll be far from ideal because I do believe that children need both parents and I will be there as much as I can. When I was young, you used to think to yourself, God, I'd like to have a son. But, I mean, when you get to my age, you just don't, I mean, you just don't think about it, really. You know, you tend to think your chance is gone. I don't know whether Harry will ever want a farm, but if he does, I'll be, well, try and keep it together for him, but if not, well, he'd probably have more sense and do something else. Probably have more sense and work for ITV. I feel like an old woman. <laughs> well, you are an old woman, my darling. And I'm an old man. I've been feeling 
absolutely awful. I've had really bad morning sickness this time and I've struggled an awful lot. But I don't know whether that's age related or whether it's because I've had a third child. And also I'm carrying a boy and everybody says you carry differently with different children and I've had two girls so I don't know but I've, I, I have to say, I don't want to admit it, but I have to say I've struggled an awful lot with this pregnancy. When I found out I was pregnant, there was nothing positive to say about being an older mum. And every time you saw anything or you listened to the radio, or it was all negative thoughts. And the first was you're prone to having twins. And then you're prone to Down syndrome. And then you're prone... There's just loads, wasn't there? And you're prone to this, that and the other. I did have worries that, um, you know, when other people go to pick their kids up, they're going to be in their 20s. Um, they've all probably got hair. <laughs> and I'm going to be in my 50s, probably puffing and panting with my puffer because I've got, I suffer from asthma. Um, and I'm doing mind that I was too old, really. Dave's really, really excited. He's, he's getting to the stage he can't wait and I'm getting more and more anxious and nervous about the... Not, necessarily, not about the birth, I'm not worried about the birth or anything. It's just going back to scratch, looking after babies again after my two are now fully grown. I'm hoping it's not a psychological thing because, he, you know, obviously he's not, he wasn't planned. But it is starting to get painful, I have to say. I just hope it doesn't last now until he's born, because four weeks, five weeks of this is... I don't think I'm going to be too impressed. Can you assign the pro forma through? It's Faye. 48-year-old Faye Hudson's pregnancy was what she'd hoped and planned for. OK, thanks, bye. But what happened next wasn't what she expected. It's all so incredible what's happened this year. Um, I just don't, you know, I can't sort of piece it together. I can't really believe it. Faye and her husband Paul have been together for 24 years and they'd been trying for a baby for 10. But just three months after Faye finally conceived, they split up. Let's have a look and see how we fix on them DX 3800. They run their own computer business, so although they're separated, they still see each other every day. If it wasn't for Faye, the way she looks at things and deals with things, um, then it would, I'm sure the story would be very much different for me, yeah. Because there's not everybody that's as understanding as Faye. Ever since they met, making a success of their company has been the most important thing in their marriage. The business just takes 24 hours, you've got to be at it constantly. You're supervising staff, you're looking at components to order, you're working on accounts. Your mind is constantly thinking about the business and, and what you actually need to do instead of thinking about anything else. But slowly and gradually it dawns on you until you're about 40 and then you realise that there is definitely something missing in my life. I just didn't want to sort of get to 50 and then look to 65 retirement and, and, and feel that there was that, that really big chunk uh, missing out of my life. So when Faye hit 45 and still wasn't pregnant, she and Paul decided to try IVF. I put the whole emphasis on wanting it really to work and this was really, you know, fantastic and it was really going to work, only to find that, um, you know, we had a, a, a call to say, look, I'm sorry, but it's not worked. And, and for me, that sort of sent me a little bit down um, because you don't really... I shouldn't have done that, but uh, I allowed myself to, to become emotionally open. Uh, and I think men have got to be aware that don't go down that route. Try to... If it works, it works. Like, it's great. If it doesn't, it doesn't but don't put the whole emphasis on you really want it to work if, because when it fails, it, it hurts. It's right. When the first cycle failed, Faye was eager to try again, but Paul was reluctant. And when Faye became pregnant on the second attempt, Paul walked out. I think Faye's found it difficult, although she's a very strong person. 
um, which I'm re I'm really amazed by, you know, the, the, the strength of character, to be honest, yeah, yeah. It's been very difficult to come in to the office without me being upset. But having a baby is so wonderful that it oversees everything else, so um, I, ca I can't really look at the negative. All right, so we'll see you tomorrow then. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Yeah, have a good night, won't you? Yeah, and you. Paul has started a new relationship and moved into a flat. Faye has stayed in the home they once shared. Initially, to start with, I felt absolutely, totally alone. The babies kept me focused from day to day, and it's actually, it's really been a companion and it's kept me going. I believe that it would have been a totally different situation if I had got pregnant younger, because I think it's the issue of the donor egg that, that's come more or less between us. Like so many older women going for IVF, Faye was advised to use donated eggs instead of her own. You're playing with nature, and it doesn't feel sometimes that it's natural. You're afraid, in a way, that people aren't going to love the child because of that reason. It's no issue to me whatsoever that it's a donor. It makes absolutely no difference. It, to me, it's actually a child, a baby. It's, it's got a soul. And that soul could have been the same soul, whether it's my egg or anyone else's egg. Let's get going. A newborn baby is a handful for any mother. But it's even harder when you've just had twins and you're 52. But Shirley Binns takes it all in her stride. My twins are eight weeks old. I've got three children that are 25, 20 and 18. You know where my keys are? I can't <laughs> believe that I'm doing it again, really. <laughs> and as well as caring for her own children, Shirley also helps to look after her grandson, Kieran, who's three. Squeeze there. Right, off to nursery then. Yeah. You're going to be a good boy today. I never thought that I would have children at this age after I've already had a grandson. Most of my friends think I'm completely mad. And like many women her age, Shirley's also got an elderly parent to look out for. So next on the list, a trip to see her dad. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> and how old are you, Dad? 84. 84. How many times have we been in and out today? Four times, I think. Oh, no, it's such hard work. I feel as if I've just got as much energy as I had when I was 27, when I had my first. I've always had a lot of energy. I've always done a lot of stuff. I play badminton, I go to the gym, we go windsurfing. There's not a lot that we don't do. Shirley's partner, Carl, is 10 years younger than her. We've been together 11, 12 years. We've, uh, I've lived with Carl for 10 years now. And we met playing badminton at a local badminton club. And we were both having difficulties with our marriage and uh, well, our marriages. And just, just sort of like mutual friends, other. really, weren't we? Yeah, we were real good friends. Mm. And uh, you talked with each other about things and things became more difficult between our families and just went on from there. Soon they were living together and wanting children of their own. I can remember sitting at the breakfast table one day and Carl said, I think it's about time you came off the, time you came off the pill now. And uh, I said, OK, and I stopped taking it that day. And uh, just hoped from then on that things would happen. So uh, it was quite exciting. But after four years, Shirley still wasn't pregnant. And then last year, when I was 50, we started looking 
on the internet for clinics that would take older older women, and we found the one at uh, Darlington. I wasn't very optimistic that it would work because so many people try so many times, and I don't think that I would have wanted to try more than once. But Shirley never had to try again. She got pregnant the first time. We went for the scan uh, a fortnight later, and uh, immediately, as soon as the picture came up, I could see there was something there. It was only like a little dot, wasn't it? In mm. fact, we've got the pictures. And uh, I could see there was something there. And she says, oh, as soon as she saw it, she said, oh, yes, there's a definitely a baby there. And I said, oh, one or two, and she says, I'll have a look. And then she says, oh, there's another one. <laughs> yeah. So all the way home, we were going, twins. <laughs> we? Yeah. Twins. They really are lovely babies. And they're so different, aren't they? Yeah. Different to look at, different personalities. It's what they're wonderful. We have our own children. I have my three and Carl has Rachel. And it was just so nice to have something that was just ours. For us of our own, you know, rather than saying, Well, this is my stepdaughter, this is my stepson, you know, this is my son. Do you want some more? Because I don't want to. No, no, all right. Our relationship is very strong. And the ultimate was to have the children. He's been so good this last few days, hasn't he? Yeah. He's just played and laid there. He's been really good. Well, I was a bit very shocked at first. I mean, I've, my mum's already had three kids to start with, and my brother's 24, nearly 25, so it's a bit of an age difference. But... After a while, it was fine. Well, I was fine with it when they told me first, but I don't know, I'm just happy for them, whatever they want. <laughs> it is hard going on. I get very, very tired. There's, uh, there's no doubt about that I'm, I'm tired by nine o'clock. I'm pretty whacked. Um, and quite often can be seen snoozing on the settee. Um, but even though, if the children kick me up three quarters of the night, I'm still all right the next morning and the next afternoon. Do you want to give him a bottle? <laughs> I can understand that people would think that we're being selfish and that when our children are 18, we might not be around, or I might not be around, because I'll be 69. We haven't got them so that we can put them on show, and so just like buying something and something nice new to have, it's uh, it's all about giving. It's not about selfish. If we're doing it, if we're doing it for ourselves, we wouldn't do it. We would save the money, and we would save the time, and we would do what we want to do. There's nothing selfish about it. Just because mummy's not as young doesn't mean to say that she can't do what what other mummies do. The worst scenario would be if they were embarrassed about it. And obviously you don't want them to be embarrassed about us being a bit older, do you? I can give my children a good life, hopefully for a long time to come. And uh, I hope that my children appreciate that uh, it doesn't matter how old I am. I don't want them to be judgmental of my age or anybody else's. Bob and Shirley are fulfilling a lifelong dream. When Robert was born, the soul was the thing that I wanted to do was bring him to Blackpool with his dad. I just can't believe this. It's just lovely to be in Blackpool. I never thought we'd see this day, but it's a day I've wished for all my life, you know, for the last 12 years. Robert, that's right. Not very often I get to go out with my mum and dad like this. So I thought I'd never have any children. And I've got a wonderful son, a wonderful husband, and I'm just proud of them both. What have I let myself in for? It's not scary, Mum. It's not like the Twizzler. This is a baby version of the Twizzler. Oh! I just can't believe I've done that! I don't usually go on rides. Please remain seated until you are asked to leave the boat. Thank you. What, you hold on? 
If, bo if a bug comes over there, you'll see what happens. Yeah. What are they? Three, two, one. Play air hockey with them and all that. I can't put it into words. It's just been a beautiful day. Really enjoyed it. Say aloha to a tableau named Hula Paradise with a very Hawaiian feel to it. Oh, it's wonderful. Other people might think. There's an age problem, but I don't. I say, as long as you're happy, the age difference doesn't matter. His life is more complete now he has got a uh. child to carry on the name of Salisbury. Uh. Faye is now nearly seven months pregnant. She and Paul are still living apart, but Paul says he's ready to get more involved with Faye's pregnancy. Imagine another contraction starting now. Just come back to us. Today, they're attending their first childbirth class together. There's going to be this very small human being that needs all your love and attention 24 hours mm. a day. And you've not had that for 24 mm. years, well, longer, because mm. I'm 48, so it's... You, you get rather selfish, to be honest. I need to read the manual. <laughs> Haynes, I can't believe it's my Yeah, man. No. I couldn't just abandon Faye. I really did not need to, to support her as much as I could because I knew that if I didn't do that, the alternatives was for Faye probably um, to say, well, I'm sorry, but you, you're not going to be able to see the child. Um, which is, was not what I want. I mean, I don't want that at all. I mean, I want to be as close, you know, no matter what happens, uh, as close as I possibly can to it, yeah. It's taken a while, but Paul's starting to accept Faye's decision to get pregnant using a younger woman's egg. There was a stage where I did actually <clears throat> feel that a donor egg seemed a bit strange. Um, but then, you know, I've sort of changed my view on that because it's like almost... For a man... In any case, it's difficult to relate to children because if you've not had children in your life anyway, that in itself is difficult to relate to. Having the scan today will be the closest that we will get before the baby's born. I feel close to it now, but to actually see it in a 4D is going to be absolutely uh, fantastic. Would you like to come and sit down Thank there, you. sir? They always say that a child can either make or break a relationship, and I'm sure that uh, that could be the case. With RVF, it does put, obviously, extra added issues in there as well. The baby's stomach here showing up, the black area, that's quite normal. I know that he was having problems with it, and I know it was extremely stressful for him. It's nice and lively, the baby is. Mm. I did try to support him, I did try to understand what he was going through, but it's really, really hard. I'm just going to stay absolutely focused on, on having the baby. Nothing that has gone before it or will go after it is going to get in the way or deter me from uh, looking after it. I feel absolutely a different woman, a different person, uh, and it's a different life, and I feel totally re rejuvenated because of it. Six-year-old Darren Minns is in labour. So far, it's lasted 31 hours, and it's proving far harder than she remembers. This is 
is over. <coughs> Dave's been at her side throughout. After 32 hours of labour, Harry Charles Paramore Jones is born. Derrin is lucky. For most women in their mid-40s, getting pregnant naturally is rare. Only one in 20 will be successful without fertility treatment. 45-year-old Andrea Kenny's been trying to have a baby for the past three years. I hadn't really thought about having a child till I was 30 and um, I tried in a previous relationship and it didn't really work then either. Andrea and her husband Lee have opted for intrauterine insemination or IUI treatment. You're, you're using your own eggs and they're not extracted from your body or anything. What happens is you're just prepared with injections of hormones into your leg. You're given another drug to release an egg and then the man's sperm is um, extracted and washed and then they pick the best ones and they put them in at just the right time and then they let nature do its own thing, hopefully. I've had one treatment which unfortunately didn't work, so we're going for it a second time now. Today, Andrea's having a scan to find out when she'll be ready for insemination. I'm still to tell some family members simply because I'm worried that people will be judgmental and think 45's too old to be having a baby. I keep swinging from well, one minute I feel really hopeful and excited, another minute I feel really depressed. No, it's not going to happen. So it is a real roller coaster. I automatically assumed it would work the first time then. Um, apparently not. So I'm just going to carry on going for it and see what happens. There, just a little follicle on that as well. The scan shows Andrea's eggs aren't ready yet, but will be soon. So if you start your injections again tonight? Yeah. It's one powder, one water. Yeah. And then we'll have another scan on Friday. Friday, OK. Well, we're in our second cycle of treatment now, and it didn't work the first time round. And I'm just wondering why, why it wouldn't have worked. Is it just one of those things, really? It is just one of yes. those things, because unfortunately, as you know, the success rates are probably only 10 to 15 percent right. per cycle. And so even if everything goes really well, there's no guarantee of mm. success, unfortunately. When they first showed me, and I went, oh, my God, at that needle. And they said, no, that's just the drawing up needle. The actual needle's much thinner. Lee, yeah. if, I'm, if I have trouble getting the other needle on, will you help me? Please. OK. I've okay. got to find a nice pink bit. As part of the treatment, Andrea has to give herself a hormone injection every night to boost her fertility. Two, three, four, five, six. 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. After a week of scans and hormone injections, Andrea is ready for her second insemination treatment. Today's the big day um, when I had the final part of my treatment. So I had my final injection 35 hours ago and um, Lee will have been in about an hour and a half ago to provide a sample, which is in the lab at the moment being prepared. And then I will be waiting to go for my treatment in a few minutes' time. It didn't work last time, but they say if it's going to work, it works in the first or second time. So, yeah, fingers crossed it'll work this time. Yeah. I want a child with Lee because it's the first person I've known that I want to be the father of my child. It's one thing for a woman to have the instinct to have a child, but I really want a child with Lee. And this is the only way that we can achieve that, really. So, if you'd like to bend your knees up, try and relax as much as possible. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think people do realise that they're more likely to fail than succeed. I think it's the same with all others. If there's a chance there and hope, we all think we're going to be the one that it's going to be successful for. All right, then. Yeah. Do a cough. <coughs> I don't think people realise the kind of stress you go through and the emotions. No, I don't think they do at all. Especially people that can conceive naturally, they've no idea. It's just over a month until Faye Hudson's baby is due. I'm 35 weeks now and I'm getting very excited, yeah. Um, well, five weeks to go, yeah, I, I just can't wait, really. Faye and Paul are still living apart. It is like the last chapter, you feel something's about to happen. It really has seemed, you know, a long time, really. Um, particularly in view of the fact with the RVF and that took uh, a couple of years and so it's like something really is going to happen so yeah it's a bit strange really difficult to actually put into words I suppose. I think Paul's extremely nervous about the birth uh, I think he has been right from the start um, it's, it's sort of been a bit of a problem to him but uh, now I think he's, uh, he's I believe he's coping with it anyway yeah I think you'll have to ask him about that I think anybody that said they weren't nervous, um, I mean, you just are. It's as simple as that. I have overall, emotionally, been really, really good, but at times I can have a day where I can feel quite weepy, but I've been very placid and um, normally, when in normal situation, I, I can be slightly more feisty than I have been, so it's calmed me down quite a lot, I think, having this baby. <laughs> Five weeks later, and Faye's due date has arrived. You've got a suitcase on the other bag. The bag's in the car, isn't it? But her baby hasn't. Because of Faye's age and because it's her first baby, the midwife has decided that Faye must go into hospital to be induced. I'm a bit scared about it because it's the unknown, isn't it? You just don't know what's going to happen. When I go to the hospital at 8.30, should be induced. It can take up to about six hours when I put the pessary in. Well, I'll keep my fingers crossed, hopefully it'll work and uh, we get a little baby at the end of it. But after three attempts at inducing her, Faye is no nearer to going into full labour. Despite their differences, Paul has stayed by her side and he's keeping a video diary. Just got to take my blood pressure now, no more internals. I'm try and have a sleep. I'll start again tomorrow. Thanks for today, anyway. I'm pleased you've been with me. But the next day, Faye's still not in labour. Because of her age, uh, they've got to make a decision, um, which is really for the, the health of both you know, Faye and, and the baby. Um, so if nothing happens today, and the chances are that um, it will be then sort of a caesarean section. Faye finally has a caesarean, and baby Daniel is born. <laughs> oh, 
think is wonderful. Fantastic, isn't it, really? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. perfect. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm so lucky. It is just an absolute miracle. It just really just takes your breath away. You can't find words to actually explain what you've witnessed. And how you feel afterwards. I oh, love him to bits. I really do love him to bits. Daniel, John, Frederick, Geoffrey Hudson. <laughs> Definitely worth all the money. I go, I, I go through it again. Mm. Faye and Paul are still living apart and Paul is in a new relationship, but they say they'll try and bring Daniel up together. It's been a long road to motherhood for Faye. For Andrea, the journey's only just beginning. She'll soon find out whether the insemination has worked. I'm still waiting, still on tenter hooks. But uh, no news is good news. Every day that goes by is a bonus, really. I'm just trying not to get too hopeful. Last week I was feeling a bit weepy. I don't know whether it's these hormone injections I've had, but I'm all right this week. She's been on edge a couple of times, uh, indecisive, forgetful. I'll put something that should be in the fridge in the oven or vice versa, or, I don't know. Lee reckons that's how pregnant women get. <laughs> and they do say that it, it feels as though your period's about to start and it's kind of felt like that, so I really don't know. I just have to wait and see. They've been told not to get their hopes up, but it's hard not to. This will be your men's room. Got a lot of work to do on it. It shouldn't take too long, though. Um, it's mainly patching up. We should know within the next three or four, three, I'd say it's about three, we should know by Monday or Tuesday, hopefully, uh, one way or the other. A few days later, and it's bad news. Andrea isn't pregnant. For me, I feel like my body's let me down, and it's a bit annoying. And, um, and we both feel that at the moment that everywhere we turn on the telly, on the radio, everybody's talking about babies. I think it's because when you become a bit obsessed with a, th a thing, you seem to notice it everywhere. I tend to think about every couple of hours or so. Um, you know, people at work chatting about the kids and whatever, you, you think, bloody hell, why wasn't it word? I feel that I'm not quite complete as a woman, that it's, it's kind of... It's it's your it's your reason for being here in a way. I know there's other things to enjoy in life, but I think we, other women that have had children easily can be blasé about it and get on with other aspects of your life. But for me, it's at the moment it's the be and all end all, and I feel like I'm not a complete woman, not fulfilled my purpose in life, as it were. Happy oh, birthday oh, to oh, you! Oh, Happy oh, birthday oh, to you! <laughs> Jane Doodney always thought she wasn't cut out for motherhood. Happy birthday to you. Do you want to help me? Do you want to help me? Should we all help? But she had a change of heart and circumstances, and now she's the mother of four. I'm 58 today, actually, <laughs> so I'm an older mum. But um, I'm a very happy mum. Annie, Annie, big wish, Annie. Yeah, big wish, Annie. Yeah, big wish, Annie. I'm a single mum. I've got four beautiful children. I've got a little girl, she's 11, Annie. Three gorgeous boys, Terry, Jack and Ian, and they're 12, 13 and 15. Jane never planned to have children. She wanted to be independent and loved to travel. But when her mother Marjorie became ill with Alzheimer's, Jane had to give up her job to care for her. I had a lot of time to think looking after my mum and I became the mother figure. And I think then, you know, I was thinking that I wanted to do something with children, um, particularly special needs children, because they're such, they're such fun and, you know, and, um, you know, I've, I've just always been drawn towards them. Oh, Annie says thank you so much for coming round. So when her mother died, Jane applied to become a foster carer at the age of 48. A lot of mine were special needs children that were with her birth parents anyway and they just needed a little time to recharge their batteries you know like um, 
I would have the children one day a week or something like that so that um, birth parents could spend some time with the other siblings or get a little bit of rest or something. So, um, so you, al always in the back of your mind you knew that they weren't yours. I mean, you would love them, but they weren't going to be yours. And all mine were short term until Annie came along, and that was different. Annie was born with a rare congenital condition called Edwards syndrome and wasn't expected to live longer than a few weeks. Her birth mother, who already had seven children, had said she couldn't cope and wouldn't take her home. It was on a Friday. I got a phone call from my support worker saying there was a little baby. She was four weeks old and she was in the children's hospital. And she's not expected to live, so... Um, they really wanted her out of the hospital um, in a family environment, you know, um, for her to be cared for um, until she died, really. By the time Jane got to see the baby, Annie had been rejected three times, first by her birth mother and then by two other foster carers who couldn't provide the amount of care she needed. I decided to have her straight away, and uh, I went up there and brought her home. Annie had two holes in her heart, a curved spine, and chronic respiratory failure, but she lived. She's now 11 and one of the country's oldest survivors of Edwards syndrome. They said that she would have three months to a year to live. They basically say the children are incompatible with life. Um, she's got all sorts of problems. I mean, she can't talk in, in the real sense, uh, although she makes us understand beautifully. Should we go out with your boys? Should we? Say yes. Yes. You just see when she's happy, she just smiles, you know. So she makes us understand. Annie's a bit of a miracle because she shouldn't be here and she is. We all know how precious life is in, in our house. And that's not a bad thing to know how, you know, how precious things are, because we've still got Annie. When Jane brought Annie home, she was already fostering two brothers, Terry and Ian. I used to have them for respite care. They were part of a, a much larger family. The boys had a younger brother, Jack, who was being fostered by another family. We used to meet Jack at parties because I used to take Terry and Ian would go to a lot of birthday parties and I started taking Jack then um, as well and he was just so cute and uh, he used to look up at me he was just this lovely little boy and he had a little national health classes on he used to just look up at me and just slip his little hand into my hand and I thought gosh you're cute but then Jane heard that all three boys were going to be adopted and would probably have to be split up. I did feel very maternal towards them, um, even though I was just their respite carer. I wanted to be their mum, you know, which was quite surprising, quite surprising. Eat it nicely now, Jack, eat it nicely. It is a big undertaking to adopt. Ian and Jack have special needs. Um, they have severe learning difficulties. Terry goes to mainstream school. They are just the kindest, nicest human beings that you would find anywhere. They were, they're just such lovely kids, you know. They've got good hearts and uh, they're funny. They're funny. They're just very gorgeous children. And they're mine. <laughs> Being a mum is the very best thing in the world. It, it is the best thing in the world. You think that you're going to give to them, but you don't realise it's a two-way street and they're always giving to you all the time, you know. Well, I can say there's nothing better. There is nothing better. I thought they needed me. I think, actually, we needed each other. Fuck. Life is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Oh. But it's also hard work. Could you just move your foot slightly, love? That's it. It's just that even at 58, Jane makes it look easy. 
like driving her family from Sussex to Scotland for a holiday, along with her sister and her foster children. It is more difficult because um, of Annie's medical needs to go away on holiday because we have to make sure that we've got plenty of oxygen cylinders to travel with. Um, we've brought 20 up with us, which is quite a lot. And then we have to get a load to go home again. Um, we have to take Annie's oxygen machine with us because we have to have that at night. All her medication, you know, we have to have just everything. It's not like an ordinary family where you can think, oh, we've forgotten something, but it doesn't matter. All Annie's stuff we do have to have. So, you know, that is a big part of our planning. After 13 hours on the road, with several stops to change Annie's oxygen tank, they're only halfway there. I don't know how to operate the lights, so I'm going to leave them because I've got to come back out anyway to sort out the car, get the washing sorted, sort out the new oxygen from, from the empties, and just stack those bits up, and that'll be easier in the morning. We're just like any other family if we arrange it properly. Annie, is Annie watching now? Because, is Annie watching? We're here. We're here, boys, look. Oh, my goodness. Oh, here we go. Come on, let's go and have a look now. Here we are, Annie. What's that stick there? Came out rather fast. the beds around, didn't we, Annie? This is normal when we go away. We have to move the furniture around to make it suit us, didn't we? And then make this longer here, move the drawers around here to put all her medicines and bits and I have a talk to them for changing her nappy in the night. You know, on the rare occasion that she'll just have her nappy change and go back to sleep. I don't put all the lights on. And, uh, and just sort it all out so that it works for us for the oxygen and everything, and make it homey. <laughs> have to have our comforts, don't we, Annie? No. Oh, you're going to be argumentative today. Every day has to be the best that it can be. Mummy. What, darling? I, I want to do it again. You want to do it again? Yeah. Because, you know, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or whenever. Jack, after Ian's had a go, you're going to have a go, all right? And so every day is important, and we should all do that. It shouldn't just be that Annie's made us think like that, because no one knows what tomorrow will bring. And Annie's illness doesn't stop the family having new adventures. Bringing up three teenagers is, um, is a really interesting road to travel. I don't know if you have an inspection, do you? <laughs> to make sure we're all dressed properly. It's a very different sort of fun, but it is good fun. It is good fun. Shoot everything that moves, Jack, won't you, darling? All right. I'm so proud of them. They're such lovely, lovely children, you know. It's all good. It's all good. This is just perfect for Annie and for the boys because Annie's in under the shade in the tent there and the boys are just running around like mad things, having a wonderful time. So everyone is happy and that makes me very happy. I think this is something special, isn't it? No. Yes, it is. You're playing with me. Yes, you are. Because I'm older, I think I appreciate it so much more, so much more, you know, and to think I nearly missed it, I nearly missed it. <laughs> It's been a month since baby Harry was born, and at 46, Darren's getting used to being a new mum all over again. I just can't believe we've managed to produce such a cutie and a contented mm. one as well. 
I was a bit worried when I first got home, just being fingers and thumbs for the first time and, you know, worrying I was going to drop him, which I think every mother does, doesn't matter how many children you have. And the weeks have just flown by, really. She just, it just seems second nature to her. She's an absolute wonderful mother. She's a <laughs> terrific mother, honestly, she really is. And it's one of the nicest aspects of it, is she is such a good mother with him. And Dave is loving fatherhood too. Well, the bits I get wrong, you, you tell me what I've done, okay. anyway. I'm quite a cynical old bugger and I thought I'd be quite matter-of-fact about it, but when I just saw the top of his head, I burst into tears. And then when they passed him to me, and he turned his head and looked at me, I just, I just never, in all my life, I lived to be 500, I will never, ever have a moment like that. It was absolutely wonderful. And oh, it's just terrific. No, you don't like it, and they've got a message for the doctor who said they didn't need contraception because Darren was too old. I was shocked when Darren told me she was pregnant, uh, but I'm blaming pleased to tell you that he was wrong because I wouldn't honestly say. It doesn't get much better than this, honestly. It really doesn't get much better. I mean, if his doctor's watching, you're a good lad. In fact, he's given me the taste for thinking of going for twins, Harry, Ollie and Stan. <laughs> Take the notice, because this is it. I think this year ought to be the year 2006 for the Jones children, and then that'll be it then. <laughs> we'll declare. For the moment, Dave and Darren are still living apart, but they're saving up so that next year they can get married and build a house and a future together. When he's 20, I'll be 66, which isn't ancient. I'm hoping it doesn't worry Harry more than anything, you know, when you're taking him to school. I don't give a damn what anybody thinks, to be honest, because he's so perfect. I don't see a problem, to be honest. They tell you all the bad bits, but they don't tell you at the end of it you could have a perfectly good, healthy baby. So I think we should write a positive book about being over 40, don't we? Mm -hmm.